the saga over Scotland's two massively over budget and long delayed CalMac ferries is a remarkable tale of incompetence and mismanagement. Eight years after the contract was awarded, the Scottish Government is accused of squandering close to a quarter of a billion pounds. Today, the Economy Secretary admitted it could be cheaper to scrap the second troubled vessel, Hull 802, and get a new one. But he said wider interests mean it makes sense to push ahead with finishing the existing project at the nationalised Ferguson Marine Yard. From the very start, we have been clear that our island communities deserve to be supported by two new energy efficient vessels with the capacity and reliability required to support vibrant island economies. While I accept that the pure value for money assessment concludes that it could be cheaper to re-procure a new vessel, this work also shows that doing so would result in significant further delays. A new vessel could not be deployed until at least May 2027, at the earliest four years from now and two and a half years from the current delivery timescale. I do not consider that that is acceptable to our island communities to wait this further period. The building of ferries 801 and 802 has been a shambles from start to finish. In fact, shambles is not a strong enough word. It's been a scandal. Six years late, three times over budget, now standing at £300 million plus. In March, the Auditor General said the final cost of 801 and 802 remains unclear. And after today's statement, that remains the case. With us now, someone who has covered every twist and turn in the ferry saga, the Scotsman's transport correspondent, Alistair Dalton. Thanks for joining us, Alistair. Why do you think the announcement was made today? I think this was an accounting exercise by the Scottish Government that required to do that to make sure that these two ferries are value for money. But on very narrow uh, grounds, just on cost, it wasn't able to bring in the impact on, on islands. Uh, and in fact, um, r really, um, the, the logic of finishing a ferry that uh, is very far on in, uh, towards completion. We've, we've, you, you've been at the Ferguson's yard. Were, were they expecting this? Did you get any sense of that? Yeah, I was at the yard last uh, Wednesday for a piece that we're doing for the Scotsman tomorrow. There was no sense at all uh, this was coming. I was standing un underneath, in fact, uh, Ferry 802. Uh, the chief executive was telling me how it's due to be structurally complete this summer uh, and there were plans for... Um, uh, launching it this uh, this autumn in November, and perhaps then then it'll, it's due to naming. So um, very much uh, business as usual there, and, and they seem to be very confident that uh, it was it was nearing completion. How could it be that you could have a, a, a hull that's been built, well, not completed, but it's on it's nearly completed, and that would still be cheaper to scrap that and build an entirely new ferry? How can that be? Yeah, it's not clear why that is. I haven't been able to to get information from the Scottish Government about why that, why that might be. Um, it, again, it seems to be very much on accounting grounds. Maybe it doesn't take into account uh, the state of the ferry. Maybe they're talking about what, what needing still to be done. Maybe that's expensive. That, 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 that question remains unanswered. But the Scottish Government has emphasised there is no increase in the overall budget. It seems to be at about £300 million, about three times the original contract. So is this uh, almost like a, uh, this is a political decision rather than an economic decision to continue with Hull 802? Is that yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a rare occasion where the uh, ministers have decided to go against the advice uh, and for the wider benefit of having a ferry complete and serving the CalMac network, they've seen the wider benefit rather than just looking at the figures. And, and these wider benefits would include, of course, confidence at the yard itself? Yes, that's really important. Uh, um, the chief executive uh, is looking ahead to see a future for the yard. They've got some small contracts for, for the Royal Navy with BAE Systems in Glasgow, but they want to prove themselves with that and be able to do more. So there's a pipeline of work beyond this ferry and the other ferry, Glen Sunnix, which is much nearer to completion, about 80% complete and due to be finished this autumn. And rather bizarrely, am I right in understanding that if, if, if they had scrapped Hull 802 and decided to go ahead with a new one, Ferguson's could actually have bid for that? And this, is, this is my understanding. And in fact, from the way that the yard has now picked itself up from 
quite a mess uh, before it was went into uh, administration and then nationalisation that I've been shown around that, that they seem to be increasing the productivity and righting all the wrongs as it were and so they are very confident of being in a, in a position to bid for more Navy work and also bid for more smaller CalMac ferries which are coming up for, for orders and they've successfully uh, built these smaller ferries for CalMac in, in, the, in the not too distant uh, past. And, and just finally then, the, the Glen Sanox, Hull 802, uh, when are, are they likely to, as far as, you, far as you can tell, meet the, the timetables? Yes. Uh, the new that, that, there has been no. The, the, uh, Neil Gray today said there was no change in that timetable. That Glen Sanox is due to be completed this autumn, and uh, 802 to be completed by uh, late summer next year. Alistair, thanks for your insight on that tonight. Thank you.